The ideas we've developed so far are enough to suggest that Galilean relativity is no longer adequate when we start thinking about the special relativity regime. In Galilean relativity, we describe the transformation of coordinates between two rest frames, S and S prime, which are moving past one another with a speed V. So S might be the coordinate system X, Y, and Z shown in this picture. S prime might be the reference frame that's moving along the X axis with coordinates X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. The velocity vector V that points between these two reference frames points along the X axis. So the origin of S prime slides along the X axis of S. In this case, the coordinates in the prime frame are related to those at the unprimed frame by the following set of equations. X prime will be X minus VT, Y prime will be Y, and Z prime will be Z. In this formulation, there's a common clock that's shared between the two rest frames or reference frames. As a result, we can differentiate the above expressions and obtain how we would describe a velocity in the prime frame with respect to the velocity as observed in the unprime frame. It would simply be the case that the prime velocity would be the unprime velocity minus this velocity vector v. And that's again because they share a common clock. Well, the Galilean addition of velocities doesn't work if the clocks are not synchronized and identical in between the two reference frames S and S prime. Think back to the example we talked about with the moving ruler seen by me when it's passing through the lab at some velocity v. You sitting on the ruler, moving along with it, thought that when you shine a flashlight uh, standing at the middle, that the two flashes of light would arrive at the ends of the ruler A and C at identical times, T A and T C. However, that's as measured by you in the prime reference frame, the the frame at rest with respect to the ruler. For you, these were simultaneous events. I, however, as represented in this diagram, saw the two flashes of light reach the two ends of the ruler at this location and at this location at unequal times TA and TC. At the time, we said that this meant that simultaneity was not valid any longer, that there was a relativity of simultaneity. But now we're going to introduce the idea that the clock for the prime reference frame and the unprime reference frame run at somewhat different speeds. Clocks are a little bit easier to understand when we think about how they are positioned on Minkowski diagrams. So let's think a little bit more about what these axes are, the CT axis and the X axis. The CT axis itself is actually a world line. It's a history line of me standing at the origin when I think I'm at rest in the reference frame S. But now let's suppose you're traveling along through that uh, reference frame, standing along with that ruler, and you're in a new reference frame S prime. You think that your CT prime axis is the same as your world line. So in other words, if you're standing at the origin of this new reference frame, your, your world line would look something like this. Because in, in our reference frame, we would graph u as moving with some velocity v. So it would look like this red dashed line. Well, that red dashed line also has to coincide with your ct axis, or we'll call it ct prime. So in the new reference frame, ct prime doesn't point along uh, parallel to the ct axis in the unprime frame. That means that, in fact, ct prime actually is a little bit of a mixture of time and space in our reference frame. So this thing points in a funny direction. The question now is, where does the x prime axis point? Well, the x axis is also a set of events. Let's think about them as a set of events that happen concurrently, or all simul at the same time. In the s frame, frame the s frame, the x-axis was the set of events that took place at the time t equals zero. So by the same token, the x prime axis should be the things that take place at a common time t prime. But what does a set of simultaneous events look like in the, uh, in the primed reference frame s? Let's think back to our example of a person standing at the center of the ruler emitting two light flashes toward this, each ends of the ruler that person thought that the two light flashes should reach the ends of the ruler at identical times. But we, in the, standing in the unprime frame, said that they were not simultaneous. Well, these two times, 
t a and t c in the unprime frame should have been simultaneous times in the prime frame. If I draw a line connecting them, then this should have been a, a pair of simultaneous events in the reference frame s prime. As a result, we can imagine that our x prime axis has to be parallel to this because x prime also has to be a pair of events at a simultaneous pair of or an equal pair of times in the prime reference frame. So we can see that the coordinate system s prime has a pair of axes that starts to collapse in uh, from the right angles in the unprime frame and the amount by which it collapses in grows and grows as the velocity between the frames grows. When we want to represent a space-time event, this can be done with coordinates. It can either be done in the prime frame or the unprime frame. Some particular point P is a, is a pair of coordinates. It's a location x and a time ct. So in the unprime frame, this might be described as x sub p and ct sub p. But it also can be described in the primed reference frame but it must be described with respect to the CT prime axis and the X prime axis. And in general, the prime coordinates will not necessarily equal the unprime coordinates. To draw these coordinates, we must remember that the ray connecting the T prime axis and P must be parallel to the X prime axis. That's this ray right here. And the ray that connects the X prime axis up to P must be parallel to the CT prime axis. That's this ray right here. As a result, this coordinate ct prime and this coordinate x prime are not equal to x and ct. It's an essential realization that both x prime will be a function of x and ct, and also ct prime will be a function of both x and ct. The coordinates are no longer a function of a common absolute time, and this means that Galilean relativity is essentially invalid when we get to this regime of special relativity.